Morning you guys, it's Karen and I wanted to come and do a more fun video than, you know, the migraine update, which is that they're not getting really any better, than all of the health issues that we're all suffering from and menopause and all of that. I wanted to come and do one that was a bit more fun. And I have found five new low carb slash keto type things or meals that I can eat that I find really exciting, really exciting. So I don't follow a keto diet, just to clarify that, but I have done a keto diet for quite some months to see if it would help my head, to see if it would help everything else. It made no difference to my migraine at all. I probably wasn't that great on keto in that there were things that I found out later that I was eating that weren't keto, like chewing gum. I do eat chewing gum. Um, I can't remember what else, but I was in ketosis, you know, I did check that I was in ketosis a lot and I did burn fat and all of that, but I just found it very difficult. I found it difficult to know what to have for breakfast because I like my shake that I have. Um, and it's not got a huge amount of carbs in it, but I use the option salted caramel and I have 20 grams of that, which I think it makes it about 10 carbs. Um, and then the evening meal, I found lots and lots of gorgeous evening meals. Like one that I had that I just keep thinking about is called pork samboy chow. And it was, it's pork mince with some peanuts and lots of sauces and whatnot, you know, and then you wrap it in lettuce. And it reminds me of dad. It's something that we used to have when we went to a Chinese restaurant, lettuce wrap it was called. Um, and it just takes a lot of cooking. You know, it's just a lot of preparation. Another one I loved was I'd make a kind of shepherd's pie and I'd make cauliflower mash. Um, but I had to make the cauliflower mash during the day. Like you have to boil the cauliflower, then you have to blend it all up, get some eggs and blend that up. And then later on, make the dinner and put the mash on and put it in the oven. You know, there were so many steps to it. And with the migraines, it's kind of difficult. But I found this company called Carb Zone, which you may have heard of, you may have seen on TikTok. They talked about quite a lot on there. And I noticed that Morrison's did their pasta. And so I thought, well, that would be good if I could find some pasta because I love my spaghetti bolognese. Um, and normally I ask for just a few strands of spaghetti, you know. Um, and so I, I went to Morrison's to check, but they didn't do it. I went to two different Morrison's and couldn't find it. So I ended up, I went on Carb's own website and ordered a whole bunch of things. And some of them were an absolute disaster. Um, the things that weren't nice with the vegan protein shake that I thought I could maybe have that for breakfast. It was disgusting. I've never tasted a smoothie or shake or whatever you would call it as bad as that. Um, their chocolate wasn't that great, but the things that I did find were really good. Now, the first thing is this, the low carb, it's low carb penny pasta. That's what it's supposed to be. But the first thing I need to tell you is, as pasta, this is awful. I, I think so anyway. Some people like it. The, the reviews weren't great for this, but as pasta, it's like rubbery and chewy and it just, it kind of tastes like cardboard. You know, it's it's nothing like pasta. I'd prefer to not have any pasta and just have the, the spaghetti, bolo the spaghetti, the bolognese part. However, what I bought this for as well was to try the pasta chips that everybody's been talking about. And so what you do is you boil up some pasta, you then toss them in oil and whatever you want really. I put on them um, some Parmesan cheese, some garlic granules and a little bit of salt. You then put them in the air fryer, I think you can do it in the oven, for 10 minutes and they're supposedly like chips. So the thing that I didn't, it didn't occur to me, and I don't know if it was an English person or a, an American person that started this craze, is when they were talking about chips, they were meaning what we in the UK call crisps, I think. So anyway, I made them yesterday. I cooked this, tasted the pasta and was like, there's no way I'm having that as pasta. It's just not nice. But let me now try because you boil it and then, like I said, put it in the air fryer. Put it in the air fryer. Tasted them hot, you know, and I was like, mm, they're okay, but they're a bit sort of, you can still taste that rubberiness at the end. So I just left them sitting in a bowl and put a plate over the top because I thought I'll see what my husband thinks later on. And I went back to them when they were cold and they are delicious. They were very, very crunchy, very hard crunchy and very... They were quite salty, but I mean, that was obviously me putting too much on them. They were quite rich, but I dipped them in a little bit of Philadelphia light and they were just yummy. And I was like, this is brilliant. I got my husband to taste them and he was like, oh, I could get through bowls of them. You know, if you make them, they're going to be gone kind of thing. And I am so excited about that because it just means like having this here, I can 
make a snack for the weekend that I know is going to be low carb and I can sit and have that in the evening instead of ending up having like little mini cheddars or I'll have popcorn. Um, I haven't worked out how many calories there are. Supposedly it's 90 calories a portion, but I think it depends how much Parmesan you put on and how many you eat and that kind of thing. But it's, you know, you can make it as you want it. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I cooked them for 10 minutes in the air fryer at 180 and then like I said, just left them and it was perfect. And they just taste like crisps. It tastes like tubes of crisps, maybe a little bit harder than that, you know. Can I tell you, there's this one woman I watch on, I watched, I don't watch her anymore, but I watched her on TikTok. She's absolutely gorgeous, very, um, I don't know whether she's Mexican, but she's got that sort of look, you know, very sort of like beautiful colored skin and really dark hair and really pretty girl. And she did a lot of recipes and they always looked so yummy. So she did this recipe for bread and she's keto. She's 100% keto. And I made this, I got all the ingredients, went out and bought, I don't know what it was, was it xanthan gum or arrowroot or something like that anyway, made this thing and she'd showed herself making it and crunching into it and she was like, mm, it's delicious and it looked just like toast. I made it and it did look exactly like toast and I couldn't wait to eat it. Took one mouthful and I was like, what on earth is this? It was horrible, really horrible. And I was like, so either she's pretending to like it or she's just got a completely different taste buds to me, you know, but I was like, that is not nice at all. I'm not eating that. So I don't watch it anymore. And I found that with a lot of recipes with keto, you know, they look gorgeous, but when you actually taste them, they're not nice. So that's why I'm so excited to have these recipes. Cause like I said, I'm not keto, but because of my, I have what's called insulinemia, which means that my body doesn't process my insulin very well. It's not diabetes, it's something different, but I do get low blood sugars, I do test my sugars, and I have to be careful the number of carbs I eat. And if I eat too many carbs, I just don't feel good. I, I could just go to sleep, you know. Um, and my body puts on a lot more weight if I eat more carbs as well. Um, so that's why I get so excited about these. So pasta chips is number one. Number two is this rice. This is so surprising. And I was looking at the ingredients and I don't know how they've managed to do it. Where's my glasses? Because the ingredients kind of read like normal rice. Where is it? Wheat protein, soy protein isolate, pea protein, whey protein, wheat flour. So it's got wheat flour in it. Wheat fiber, egg, white protein and stabilizers. But the carbs, I should have told you the carbs on the other one, shouldn't I? Um, for this one, the low carb, the protein is 60 grams per 100 grams versus for white and whole wheat past, uh, rice, sorry, it would be seven grams of protein. And for this, the carbs in normal rice are 80 grams per 100. These are 14 grams per 100 grams. And so I will probably only have, I don't know, I guess 50 grams maybe of this. So that would be seven grams of, of carbs, which is really, really good. Um, let me show you it close up. Now I did actually boil some yesterday. I should have showed you it boiled because it it looks like rice. And so I boiled a little bit when I was boiling the pasta. I just wanted to try these things before actually cooking them up for dinner. Um, but we're gonna have this tonight. Now what we normally have for our dinner is, so tonight we're having chicken um, curry and it's just a curry sauce from Marks and Spencers. And we normally have half of a bag of whole grain basmati rice or brown basmati rice I think it is and half a cauliflower rice so we mix it all together in a bowl one portion of cauliflower rice one portion of this brown basmati mix it all together and split it between the two and that's really nice and it kind of lowers the carbs for me but not as low as this but yeah I cooked this yesterday and tasted it and then get, got my husband to taste a spoonful and he was like yeah that's just like it's just like brown rice to me because we've always had brown rice not always probably had brown rice for 10 years or so. Um, and so brown rice is quite hard to get used to if you've been used to white rice because it tastes completely different. But I would say that's what it tastes like. So we're going to have it tonight. I said to him tonight, just use this instead of the brown rice and still mix it with a bag of cauliflower rice because I like the fact that I'm getting my vegetables in there because we don't, I don't eat that many vegetables any other way. Um, so I think it's gonna be really nice and I'm really excited that I can now have rice with a dish you know we can have this like I said to Mr. I really fancy sea bass I've not had sea bass for ages and we were watching um, MasterChef and that's what made me think of it um, and he said oh I could make sea bass at the weekend now he normally makes sea bass with sliced garlic and lemon new potatoes he, and then he sort of fries them and I said to him well if I didn't want to have it with carbs we could do 
what we do when we're just having plain rice like when it's not with a curry which is we'll have the half and half um, or sometimes just cauliflower rice and then we put in um, some chives and a chili a chopped up chili and that's really nice like that and maybe squeeze a little bit of lemon over it so i'm just i'm just so excited that i've got another side because sides breakfast and sides were the ones that i never really knew what to eat on keto like i said i knew what to eat for dinner but it just there was so much preparation for it the, this, not everything here is from carbs though, by the way this is the last one i'm talking about and the next two are just ideas um so this is the low carb crisp bread and oh my goodness it's delicious and this is something else where i've tried a lot of versions this is what it looks like and they've not been that tasty um so much so that i've thrown them away and i looked at these and the reviews were all saying how lovely they were tasting there's a lot of complaints about the fact that it comes like this all broken up but i don't mind about that at all um because you know there are bits that are a big enough size that you could just put a little bit of philadelphia light on that and i could have that for lunch and i was like that's another lunch idea i've got plenty of lunch ideas i tend to eat low carb for lunch so i'll either have a salmon fillet with some beetroot and carrots or i'll have um scrambled eggs with cheese i just scramble up some eggs and then put some grated cheese in or i'll have a chicken salad which i'm going to talk about now but this just gives me that other option of something to have you know and it's something i can take when i'm going out that was the other area that was really difficult if kev and i were going out for a walk like at the weekends i always make sandwiches to take with us and i was like there's a bread that i love called live life but the shop that i can get it in is miles away and i can freeze it but it's not the same then when it defrosts you know but this is something that i could definitely take you know but the other thing is as well it's quite salty let me tell you the carbs on this as well i think i'll be able to read it okay so per 100 grams there's 11 grams of carbs so it's lower carb than the other stuff it's really good um but you get quite a lot for you know if you're having 50 grams of this which it says is a portion then there is only five grams of carbs um but i i got kev to taste this as well when we were dipping it in philadelphia light again and this would also be a really nice evening snack so there's plenty of different options with this so really enjoyed that i'm not affiliated with carb zone by the way at all i wish i was <laughs> i have to see if they've got an affiliate program the fourth thing i want to talk about is just an idea that i had and we tried and it's been a complete success so do you know how i was saying with spaghetti bolognese is one of the meals that i really missed on keto because even with having a few strands of pasta it you couldn't do keto like that it would put you over you know take you out of ketosis and so we do we do tend to have spaghetti bolognese and like i said i just have i think have weighs me out like 40 grams of pasta which is not very much at all he's always like are you sure this is all you want you know but i've said to him i've got to eat low carb especially since i like having grated cheese on my spaghetti bolognese which means that it's a high fat meal you know now we get the five percent mints or sometimes even have it with turkey mints but it's quite a high calorie meal and unless you're on keto and burning the fat it's going to be a high calorie meal um so i said to kev why not try cabbage so why not try white cabbage we don't need to have very much but we bought this white cabbage and basically you slice it into ribbons boil it for two minutes and then strain it and i had seen it on tiktok for for another recipe it was like mixing with something else um and i said why don't we try that and have that instead of pasta and so kev was up for trying it and he was pleasantly surprised and so was i it was actually really really nice and so that's what we're going to have from now on instead of having pasta we're going to have these cabbage strips and again it adds in another vegetable i mean we've got mushrooms and onions and tomatoes and whatnot in a in a spag bowl anyway but it just adds more vegetable and less carbs so i thought that was a really good idea <laughs> Um, and number five is maybe not that exciting to you guys um, or maybe not that much of a of a new product but it's just a chicken salad and it was just something I wanted to say in case you hadn't thought about having that for lunch and tell you how I make it because it's just so delicious the reason that it's new to me is I don't like touching me and and I never have and when I've lived on my own Gee, I'm just realizing how patchy my neck is, my tan on my neck. Anyway, um, <laughs> when I've lived on my own, I have been vegetarian. I have never had meat in, I've never bought meat 
um, as a single person. I've never cooked meat as a single person. Um, actually, that's a lie. One year I did, I made my sister a spaghetti bolognese. She wouldn't eat the vegetarian stuff. So I bought frozen mints because it wasn't quite as bad. <laughs> um, but I've just always been funny about me. Even my stepmom will tell you, you know, she used to slap me around the head because I would refuse to pick up the bag that had the meat in it if we went shopping. But I I know that I enjoy a chicken salad. And I thought if I could cut all the yuckiness off like any fat or anything, I won't even say the words, but anything else and just have white meat. If I could manage to do that myself, I could probably have a chicken salad and that would be really nice. You can buy ready-made chicken, but it always tastes a bit dry. And so I bought, I made a chicken fillet one night because, or I made chicken, sorry, one night because Kev was supposed to be home and wasn't and it was chicken on the menu we normally only put chicken on when Kev's cooking it I will cook any non-meat dinners that we're having but he does all the meat cooking because he likes meat you know um so I made this chicken dinner and I said to him I managed to do it I put gloves on there was no way I'm touching it with my bare hands I put gloves on I said I managed to do it and I wasn't like all the way through you know as I sometimes am if I ever see meat in the kitchen and I said to him, maybe I could make myself a chicken salad so I did. I cut up this chicken. I was so proud of myself, but the salad was just delicious. So what I did was I cut up the chicken into just chunks and then I put a little bit of olive oil, like literally just a teaspoonful, and then I sprinkled it with this. And this is really the thing I want to tell you about is this salt. And why am I opening it? Oh, I suppose so you can see it. You see what it looks like? Oh, the smell. Now you're only gonna like this if you like garlic, but it is true to its name. So it's called a really garlicky roasted garlic and sea salt and it is really garlicky but it's just so tasty it looks like there's something else in there apart from garlic maybe there's not ingredients sea salt roasted garlic oh no that's it this is just so yummy i used this on that pasta i used this on I've used it on potatoes that I've put in the air fryer. I've used this on everything and it is just delicious. So I sprinkled this over the salt. Well, that also means that it helps to tenderize it. Um, so I put that in olive oil and that was it. Stuck it in the fridge, let it sit for, I don't know, 10 minutes and then cooked it in the air fryer. And then I chopped up a lettuce, put it in it, chopped up um, a yellow pepper, really, really small. And what else did I put in it? Oh, I chopped up some of these peanuts and put those in it and then I made a little sauce but again it was just a tiny amount which was I get a little jug and I put in a teaspoon of sesame oil and then about the same a teaspoon of lemon juice and then I add in half a teaspoon of peanut butter and sort of mix it all together and it hardly looks like anything you end up with like a tablespoon of something but if you sort of tip that into the lettuce and then take some of the lettuce out and put it into whatever you've mixed the sauce in it gets every drop of it um so that was my kind of salad. I don't like tomatoes, but you know, you can have tomatoes in there. And then I added in the chicken after putting it in the air fryer for, put it in for 10 minutes. So use the thermometer to make sure it was all right. 10 minutes at 180. Um, in fact, I think the second time I did it for nine minutes, but it was just so yummy. This just makes everything, this means that I don't need to have cheese on things because when I've had chicken salads in the past I've put parmesan cheese on it and I don't need to because this really really flavors it um so yeah this is one of the things I want to tell you about who's the brand make it oh no make it really garlicky maybe that is the brand I'm not sure I'll try and see if I can find an online link maybe they sell it on Amazon but if they had a big huge tub of this I'd buy a big huge tub I think I bought this in Sainsbury's um and so it was just to tell you to try that salad idea because it's a really nice low carb lunch that really fills you up and takes a long time to eat but it's it's just so delicious you know and like I said I find that a lot of keto re recipes promise to be delicious and aren't. <laughs> um, but one other thing I did buy from the carb zone is these low carb protein tortilla. I might try one for lunch today. I don't know what I'm going to do for lunch today actually. I'll have to have it at half 11, which is in 10 minutes. Oh my goodness, I'm getting my hair cut today. Um, so I'm going to be going there at lunchtime. So I might have scrambled eggs, but I might just try a corner of this and put a little bit of Philadelphia on it probably. But I've got a feeling this won't taste very nice. But the plan for these was to make a pizza because tortillas are perfect for making pizza. You just spread a bit of tomato paste on, sprinkle your cheese, put whatever toppings you want on, and that's you done. As you're saying that, I think you need to cook the tortilla first in the oven and then put the toppings on but when I used to have pizza when I was on keto I had to make 
the pizza base on the Saturday, you know, and it was such a shame because Saturday was our family day and we'd be going out for walks and I just didn't have time to do it all, you know, it was such a rush then to make the pizza base, then get it out, then put the toppings on, you know, um, and Saturday night is our pizza night. It, it's just, even even we say to Watson it's pizza night and he comes running through because he gets a little peanut butter thing, you know, um, and we all eat it in the living room rather at the dining table. And so it would be nice if I could just take one of these out and it would be much, much easier. So I'll let you know how I get on with that. Please do let me know of any delicious recipes you have for keto because anything low carb is helpful and I want my food to be tasty. You know, call me crazy. <laughs> but I, And I've got a really fussy, I'm a really fussy eater, you know. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, hopefully I can find some links for these. The only downside, the big downside, I guess, is they're expensive. Like these are a fiver and they would cost one or two pounds wouldn't they, in the supermarket. But I'm hoping I'll see them in Morrison's um, because they're, they're showing on their website they, they've got quite a few of the carb zone things, although a lot of them are out of stock. The only thing they showed in stock was the pasta and they didn't have it on the shelves or even a space for it. So I feel like that's maybe about to be stocked. So that would be really good and hopefully it wouldn't be quite as expensive. Um, but it's worth it to me for the difference in my health when I eat low carb, you know. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you again soon.